I think we should use this grappling hook. Yeah, I know they're throwing stuff at us, but if we dilly-dally too long, it's even worse than this. Well, it's actually more funnier than this. I think that they have gone. They shouldn't be bothering us any further. For a king's crash pad, this isn't very opulent. Where's all the loot? Nothing in here looks too historically significant. Maybe they stashed all their goodies in case they lose the battle. Hmm, if they did hide their treasure, it's not going to be all that easy to find. I suggest that we look for as many clues as we can. That's pretty much the plan in general. That's pretty much how it's been since we started. Those seats built in the window were usually the only furniture in a tower. Furniture was rare, or reserved for the aristocracy like our king here. In fact, if you did have furniture, it was generally a flat chest that doubled as a bench. Tapestries were used a lot as wall coverings to warm up rooms. The illustrations usually depicted historical moments such as great battles or biblical scenes. Oh, I can't believe this. I don't know how many times I told the movers the bed spread should be done in taupe. Hey, nice chest. Hey! I don't think that there is actually a way to open this chest. I mean, this key is for something very specific. Well, that is actually a pretty nice depiction of a castle under siege. Guess another good example of life imitating art, wouldn't you say? Except for the 20 foot knights, of course. You gotta tell them. You gotta tell them. Soylent gruel is made out of people. Okay. What lovely candelabras. I wish my brother George was here. Again, this copper key is an exact match here, but it doesn't work. I'm not too sure what the significance here is. Maybe it's a clue of some sort, but there's no way to actually enter this. Is it a cupboard? This part here, it's not exactly hidden, as a big hand here, it could indicate in that you, it's, you can interact with it, but it will unlock something a bit later on. Well, it unlocks something pretty significant. I hope that's they are back up there. Ooh. 
Well, if this is the king's study, some of the papers or notes in here might give us some clues. The way those papers have been laid out on the table, it looks like someone was doing a little planning. Yeah, we will get to them. This must be the study. When the king stayed here, it would be his throne room. In his absence, it would be used for receiving visitors, and right now, I would guess, planning the defense of the castle. Which way first? Let's go to the throne. Is, it, is this a throne? Oh, sorry, Arthur. I'm not exactly too sure how to get out of this, so um, let's have a read of this first, then I'll consult Arthur. It's pretty handy that they still write in English, even though we're in the middle of France. Again, feel free to pause, as this is not exactly easy to read. And I will be posting screenshots in the forum. Yeah, there is no obvious way to exit this. There we go. I have to just throw Arthur's biochip at it. Oh, the help comment has disappeared. Whoops. How the hell do they get a cow up there? What's that room under the cellar? Doesn't seem to be labeled. Yeah, I believe we are here right now. You know, I'd be willing to bet that's where they've stashed their loot. That looks like a defense plan for the keep. These guys need help. Badly. This should be the main door to the keep. It would usually put the entrance on the upper level because the narrow stairway to the door would make attackers more vulnerable and the keep easier to defend. Surely this guy would have heard us opening and closing the door. But yeah, if we hang around too long, he turns around and things end pretty badly for us. I think we better pick that up before there's nothing left of it. No. Oh, there we go. I think that is all that we can do here. Oh, hi. Surely, when this person jumps around, it will be picked up by the agency? That was the whole big thing where they were tracking Gage's movements, so why can't they track this person's here? That other time traveler must have been doing something over there before you startled him. Maybe that's a good place to start looking. 
That chest he was standing over has to have something to do with this. Maybe the chest is the way into that unmarked room on the plans upstairs. It looks like the supplies are pretty depleted. Wow, you look at those kegs. Probably not much left in them this far in the siege. What I'm trying to figure out is where do you put the top? Yeah, it's very convenient having a key to this chest right in the blacksmith's workshop. And the big thing is that when you open this chest, there is actually a bottom to it. And the way to open it is to press the tapestry upstairs. We've kind of already gone through that step. As I said, it wasn't exactly too hidden. Well, we're obviously in the right place. Now we just need to pinpoint what's been changed. I think this would be a good time to use your locate biochip. I don't think we have time to cross-reference every object in this room. Okay. Why, why, why are we only taking one? I'm sure we could fit a few in our pockets. That's an enamel on leather portrait of Richard and John's grandfather, Geoffrey Plantagenet, made in 1158. Nice likeness, huh? One of the few pieces still around in my time. Too bad. If you chip away the enamel and gold leaf, you can still see the numbers. Since life was so difficult in the Middle Ages, what with constant wars and plagues and whatnot, people just didn't have time for art. The knowledge of the masters of past generations wasn't passed on and was eventually forgotten. That's why everything from this period of history was pretty crude compared to the ages before and after it. And very little of it has survived because it was mostly in the form of tapestries and book illuminations most of which have perished. Okay. We have one last thing that we can do. Here we go. And we need to find Richard the First sword, I believe. There's only one thing that's kind of sword-shaped here. mathematical pattern. It's flawless. I don't know what it is, but it definitely does not belong on that sword. And we are done here. So there is one location we haven't visited yet, and that is Da Vinci Studios. I believe Chichen Itza will probably be the last place we will go. Well, I'm on this list. This should be an interesting area to explore, but they've all been interesting, really. Hmm. Maybe we should try and get our bearings before we start searching around. Let's take a look outside and see what's around. So is this real? Are we really in Leonardo's studio? Hmm. 
no staircase. There's a pulley system across from us with a rope going down it. Looks like a cog track ringing the outside. It might be some kind of dumbwaiter. Well, if it's an elevator, we should be able to bring it back up. Maybe we should try using the pulley to bring up whatever's down there. Try the mechanism across from us. I hope this wasn't to try out his parachute designs. We could try jumping, but there is no option there. Da Vinci really was a master of contraptions. It looks like when the Duke of Milan allowed him to build this place, he got a chance to field test a lot of his ideas. There's something on the floor around here. There we go. Let's have a look. So we have both parts of this number here. That is very handy. And we have collected something pretty much all the main evidence. Good. This is Leonardo's portrait of a musician. This is supposed to be a friend of his, Atlante Migliarotti, whom he traveled to Milan with, but historians were never sure. I suppose if we waited until morning we could find out for certain, but, well, I guess we could save that for the next trip. I wonder if Leonardo realizes he'll never finish this piece. If records are correct, he's been working on it for, what are we in, 1488? About three years now. Another two to go before he gives up on it for some reason. I wonder why. They have I apologize for that. I didn't realize he would stop talking if I interacted with other things. Don't mess around with this just yet. Pretty heavy duty. There's a rope that goes down through the floor, probably to a counterweight. The controls look pretty straightforward, though. It's probably really simple to operate. One of those levers must be a brake. It would help if we could read the labels. Can you translate Latin? I'm sure we can. You're not one of those people who doesn't like to read directions, are you? Just translate the labels, find out how to unlock the thing, and wheel it up. Okay. Simple enough. Now, how do we get to this area here? I'm sure we, will, we may find out soon enough. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can't be here twice at the same time, can you? So if that's not you, there's another agent messing around over there. Well, I don't think we have to look any further. This is going to be easy. Whatever was tampered with is going to be in that other tower. We might even be able to catch him in the act. Moro must have been pretty impressed by Leonardo's letter of introduction to fund this. This is amazing! 
Okay. There's not much we can do out here. Let's go and fiddle, fiddle with some knobs. So let's unlock. Well, guessing from the direction of the tracks, I think we would need to push the turnstile counterclockwise to go down. And for some reason we can't do that just yet. Oh, maybe we can? There we go. Notice there isn't a pulley system down here to lower the platform? I'm sure that was by design. Da Vinci was known to be very secretive, even paranoid, and he liked his privacy. Wow. Amazing. With all the different things Da Vinci had his hands in, he still had time to keep this place looking pretty. Ludovico Sforza, Il Moro, the current Duke of Bari, is actually a usurper. His young nephew, Gian Galeazzo, is the rightful heir, but hey, what are uncles for? Let me handle things till you grow up, kid. Pity he never got the chance. No big surprise that the kid died mysteriously before assuming the head of the family. The court of Milan was renowned for its pageantry, art, and music. Leonardo's previous patron, Lorenzo di Medici, may have sent him here knowing that the gesture would placate his powerful and ambitious neighbor. Though why da Vinci made the move has always been a mystery. All this, of course, would seem to be a strong motivation. Still under construction. The current war against the Venetian Republic, money must have been coming in sporadically. Maybe this won't be as easy as I thought, Gage. It looks like we're gonna have to find another way up to the tower room. Well, we have access to all of Da Vinci's workshops. There's got to be something we can use to get up into that tower. Now, Da Vinci's main purpose here was to design war machines for the Duke. I'm sure he must have devised something for scaling castle walls. I'm sure this will come in handy. Well, at least we've explored the outside area. 
well, of this part anyway. There's still much more to explore in this area. <laughs> 